Sometimes in life, things pick you, you don't get a choice. This is the story about being in the right place at the right time, and man, I am pumped to get into this one. So this story started about two to three weeks ago now. Um, we're on our way home from our four month trip. Hopefully you guys have followed along. If you haven't, uh, there's a full 18 part series and man, we had an amazing time. So we're really on our second last night and uh, quite down in the dumps about having to go back because we really truly love traveling this great country of ours. We we're really looking for that pub experience. So we called in and tried one last little town just outside of Cobar and damn, we got that experience we were looking for. It was an awesome meal. We had a few beers, the kids were playing pool, really relaxed feeling, just locals. And I uh, got talking to one local in particular. We got talking about cars. He said, I've got a bit of a collection. Would you like to come around and have a look? I couldn't be in his ute quick enough. And as we went around the back of his house, I pretty much bought this car the minute I saw it. Even Megan looked at me and said, holy shit, you're gonna buy that. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I think so. Um, so it, it was really one of those, holy to hell, that car just picked me. That It's just me all over. And it's just what we needed to uh, pick ourselves up from being you know, on this amazing trip and then getting back to the daily grind. This is going to be our next big project and uh, I'm really excited to get into this and film it and take you guys along for the ride because I have got a friggin' lot to learn. It'll be a very steep learning curve for me. I'm mechanically minded, but I'm definitely not a mechanic. So I'm gonna play some footage now of me and a mate going back out to pick it up. 1700 Ks round trip and Tim, he couldn't be happier to get in the car with me, so thanks very much for that, mate. I really appreciate it. And uh, we had a great time, we really did. Visited a couple of awesome little outback pubs, had a great meal, met some great people again. You guys know who you are. And uh, we picked up what is gonna be my next big project, and it all went to plan. So I'm gonna roll some footage now. When that's all over, we're gonna do a full walk around, and we'll have a chat about what the plans are for the old girl, and um, you know, maybe you guys can have a bit of input on that i'd really like some um comments on this one because i've got a damn lot to learn and i'm hoping you guys can help me so let's roll the footage but uh, time to go go and pick up me mate grab the car trailer and uh Head for Denman Pub, I think. I've had a look. Looks like a good spot. So, oh, it's gonna be a long afternoon. Not exactly living like kings, but it's a feed, and uh, that'll do. The Denman pub is a cracker, so we'll probably come back here tomorrow afternoon. We called in for a quick beer, just the one, and uh, we'll keep heading west, get a little bit closer tonight. We'll see where we end up. Well, we made it to camp, and what a camp. Look at it. Free flash. It's not flash, we pushed on too far. And now the pub's shut, and it's 10 past 10. So we're having a beer and the, with the f***ing bugs. Cheers, bros. Cheers. Righto, up bright and early. It's actually um, sort of a bad little spot here, Ballamore. Cool little pub across the road here. Um, you can stay just behind it. In a, in a gated off area, or it does say on wiki camps you can free camp across the road, which we did, obviously, because <laughs> the pub was shut when we got here. It was a bit late. Yeah, so the car trailer I got, guys, is just a U Haul rental trailer, but they are three and a half ton GVM. Apparently, they've been doing these for a couple of years now, and it tows like a dream. Um, yeah, really pumped with the trailer. Feels nice and safe, um, and it is legal, so you can put up to 2.4 tons of payload on it. Uh, so keep that in mind, if you ever need a car trailer, you haul do do a heavy duty version, have done for the last couple of years. Got him, what do you like? 
And we're back on the scene of the crime. We couldn't go past the pub without having a schooner, eh, bro? Yes, but now we have a Land Cruiser as well. Well, now we have two, actually. <laughs> anyway, time for a schooner and a bit of lunch, and we'll hit the road again. Typical my style, we didn't end up uh, parking where Timmy parked it anyway, so we've moved out the back to a possibly or hopefully quieter spot. With a swap. With a swap. <laughs> there won't be too many mozzies tonight, eh? Nah, none. Well, there won't be over there in the pub, so. <laughs> between the shed and the house. So get double stop, you're running the trampoline. <laughs> Pretty sweet. So yeah, we really had a ball going to get now. Uh, you know, there wasn't a lot of thought going into the filming, so it's just a bit of a slideshow and a, you know, a bit of a feel for, you know, how the weekend went down. Uh, we were more excited about just being, a, you know, being away as a as a couple of blokes and visiting a few pubs and picking up a toy. So uh, as far as a trip with your mate goes, you don't get much better than that. Uh, so it's a 1981 model HJ47 Toyota Land Cruiser, four speed manual, two H diesel motor, arguably the pick of the old Land Cruisers in my eyes. The only thing that's really missing is a disc brake front end uh, if for anyone that knows these vehicles. However, um, at this point that really doesn't bother me because uh, if you haven't picked it up in a few of the shots you've seen of it already, it needs a little bit of work, like um, a lot. But I'll run through how we're going to attack this because 
It looks like it needs more work than what it actually does because my plans for this are um, a little bit unique and uh, I want to really make it mine, this one. So let's have a run through and have a really good look at her. So yeah, the first thing that caught my eye with the old girl was the fact that it was the right colour. Um, bit of a Sandy Torp fan, but I mean more than that. It's the right colour, but it's in the right condition. It has enough patina. Uh, it looks period correct. It looks frozen in time to me. So look, there are parts on it that are probably a little bit further than patina and you call it really rust, like cancer. And there's a few bits I'll, I'll cut out and modify. Um, and that's kind of the look I'm going to go for. I'm going to go for a rat rod style look. Um, and but but on but keep it obviously as a four wheel drive 100% I want to be able to use this car I bought this thing to use to go four wheel driving to go on small camping trips uh, Who knows maybe I'll drive it across the country one day. I mean I'm getting ahead of myself there, but <laughs> Look, I'm really really pumped to be able to have the have the ability to have ever done something like this I've always wanted a, a cool project car to muck around within the shed i've never been able to justify one the money to the fact that i'm not a mechanic but as far as cars go they do not get much simpler than this um, i think i can get my head around this one i do have a fair bit of mechanical knowledge uh, i've just never really done it never been really hands-on with it as much as i would have liked so i'm going to learn a lot with this uh, and i hope you guys can help me along the way like i said earlier we'll just start with the outside there's a lot of positives about this thing There'll be some people sitting at home and go, what the hell did you buy a chicken coop for? <laughs> and um, I mean, a lot of people, I get that 100%. There'll be a lot of people at home that will be just like, oh, that damn, that thing is damn perfect. Just such a subjective thing. So the worst spot on the body is probably the guards and the, and the little side steps. Both sides, they're pretty well rotted out. Um, I've got a plan for that that doesn't require me replacing that guard. So the last thing I want to do is put a different colored panel or a painted panel on it. I really want to leave the frozen in time look. Um, so easy, easy way of getting rid of these is I'll continue these side steps through. Um, I've got an idea for a bit of a bit of a uh, rat rod look, snor snorkel and exhaust. Um, the tray for me is bloody perfect. There's a good chance that this tray and even the bull bar is maybe factory Toyota. So it's all staying. It's it's like era. It's era correct. So uh, all the grills there, the bibs there. The other really big bonus to this thing was it's nearly complete. Other than a couple of blinkers, some mirrors, um, a lot of the interior needs, well, all the interior needs to be redone. I'm 100% I'm, I'm we'll just do a brand new interior, but as far as the outside of the car goes, it is all there. The chassis itself is, not, we're 99% sure it's, you know, rust free. Um, the surface rusty, and it's full of dirt, but we had a good poke around it. And I think once we gurney this up and uh, really clean it down, I, I think the chassis is gonna be, yeah, absolutely spot on, which is the biggest gamble with buying something like this is I need to be able to register it and the chassis needs to be solid and the thing needs to be safe. So other than the guards on both sides, um, the rest of the body is pretty good for rust. You know, a tiny bit there, and there's one little hole in the roof. The rest of the roof is solid. There's no fiberglass panels anywhere that's already been bodged up. Um, there is a tiny little bit of, tiny little bit of bog in the back corners we noticed. Um, and there is a couple of tiny holes through the floor, but the floor is, uh, uh, it'll be able to be patched up. We don't have to replace the floor or anything like that. All the glass is in it. Um, so yeah, like when I was looking for this, well actually, when this car found me, uh, I then really looked deeper and uh, I knew it was the one for me. So anyway, we'll get in, have a look at the inside. This, this could make a few people laugh. You ready? Look at that. She is ready to go. Look, it's uh, just a bit of armor oil and that's ready to drive down to the shops. Um, uh, the plan is to wire wheel the rust off and use some rust converter and, and just stop it. I don't wanna, I don't wanna paint anything. Um, in saying that, once all this flooring comes up, We'll clean it all out. I'll probably will paint under the paint the inside of the car to stop it rusting any further. You can still buy all new vinyl flooring. Like I said, the inside I'm going to put all new inside. It's it needs to be comfortable. It needs to be safe for the wife and the kids to get into. So yeah, that's something that has to be quite nice. You have to have decent seats to sit on. Like we're not gonna we're not gonna run that. That's for sure. But the outside is absolutely perfect. 
Anyway, we'll open the bonnet and we'll have a look under there. Right, hey, we'll pop her open. I just love the simplicity of that. Like, this is this is what attracts me to this old girl. Like, how good is that? Lift her up. And it does have a stand, but you don't need it. Look at that. Right, hey, so the old 2H diesel. These are arguably one of the better diesels ever made. Everyone you talk to will tell you that. Now, I do need to clarify that I have no idea whether it runs. Um, I honestly, honestly have not started it. Haven't even tried to start it. Uh, I really want you guys to be there when I first do because if it does run, um, I won't be able to fake how excited I am. <laughs> and I really want to capture that. Look, I'm 90% I'm gonna say that it's gonna run. The guy I bought off was a nice fella. I really, really think he was an honest, decent bloke. And uh, he told me he did have it running about 18 months ago. So it hasn't been sitting around for 20 years not running. Um, the oil levels look really good. It smells like diesel in the tank. Uh, we do know it has compression. When we rolled it off the car trailer, it was coming backwards, you would have seen that. It was holding itself on the motor. Um, and, and as far as the, an old motor goes, if there was one that was gonna start, it's gotta be a 2H. So I'm gonna give it a chance. And um, if it starts, I'll be so far ahead because the plan is just to do basic things to it to get it roadworthy and registered so I can use it straight away whilst I work on it. Um, and saying that, I want to do make sure it's safe. So probably once the engine's running, I don't really care if it's not running 100%. If it's running and working, um, I'm going to do pretty well everything from the bottom of the tyre to the engine as far as running gear goes. You know, bearings, brakes, unis, uh, probably new leaves, shocks. Because like I said, it needs to be safe. If, if it's not safe, I can't you know, have the kids in it or, or Megan in it. And this is about us to enjoy. It's not just me to enjoy, that's for sure. Uh, so that's the plan, guys. Uh, 2H, I'm just praying, praying to God she starts. And um, that'll be in the next episode. But we'll, um, we'll, we'll keep our fingers crossed. And I do have a bit of work to do before then. So the plan is straight up. I'm gonna um, rip all the interior out of it, the seats, the old vinyl flooring. I've already sprayed it down with a bit of degreaser. Um, and then we gotta get it out the back of the shed, gurney all the dirt out of the chassis, gurney the motor down, clean it up so we can see what we're working on. There's been a bit of wiring over the years, it's been butchered up a bit. So we're gonna trace back and have a look at how the glow system's working, uh, if it's working. If not, I've got a bit of start, you bastard. I don't want to spend too much money on the motor if it's junk. So I just need to know it starts. And then uh, I'll really start putting some fresh oil filters. Uh, have a look at the glow plugs. Might have to put a set of glow plugs in it. The beauty of it is you can buy just about everything for these still. A lot of it being genuine Toyota parts. I mean, look, I'm a bit of a Toyota fanboy and you all know that. But that's why. Like, you can still... This is still a serviceable vehicle. Like, don't get me started on this electric revolution bullshit where we're gonna throw all these cars to the bin because EVs are greener. Anyway, that was a rant, we won't go there. Um, so yeah, awesome Toyota keeps making all these parts for these things. So yeah, it'll be a matter of just um, pouring buckets of money into it and it'll be sweet. The ute did come off a farm. It is nearly a one owner. Uh, the guy I bought it off, frequency bought it off his neighbor, that he's pretty sure that bought it brand new. Uh, so that is a pretty cool little bit of history. And you reckon whilst it was on the farm, it might've been towing something it shouldn't have. <laughs> I say, um, they've been towing a few farm implements around with it. And uh, the uni show that, because there's about an inch slop in all the uni joints underneath. So like I said, mechanically it needs a lot, but the guts of it is there, the chassis is solid, and the body's perfect in my eyes. So uh, the other really cool little neat feature, which I, I mean, it, it adds value, it adds character, uh, it goes along with the rest of this vehicle is, this little hole here is a bullet hole, and that's coming from the inside of the cab out. Now, I did have to ask, <laughs> um, so when that happened, did anyone get injured? And uh, glad to say no, there was no one in there. Luckily, and I'm assuming that the window is down because it still looks like the original class. But um, the plan is, I'm, I'm not, I'm not patching that up. That's, um, that's, that's got to stay for sure. I mean, this is what this car is about. Like it is telling a story just sitting here. It's like so hard not to walk down into the shed and just lean on it and have a beer. Um, 
yeah so come along for the ride guys we're really gonna do so much to this thing but then at the same time do so little um, for me the looks are there there'll be no paint it's ready to roll we'll just get it on the road mechanically so next episode we will start washing it down and see if the old girl will turn over so don't forget guys you only live once get out there and enjoy it go and buy something stupid like i did